Shanti, in our uh, daily activities and things, we have ideas about what, what we want to happen. But how, how do we deal with the attachment to those ideas so that we can f fulfill yes. the potential of uh, yes. the day? Attachment the is something is planned. We plan ahead of time, days ahead of time, prepare for it. And something goes wrong and then you feel crashed. Simplest example, you are planning outdoor picnic. You're preparing, everything is prepared and it starts raining. You are not prepared for it. You will be disturbed, all the people will be disturbed. So the choice is preference. Be prepared for next thing, you know, just something. So don't be stuck on this thing at this time, this place and certain way. Be flexible. That is considered flow with life. Because what we are interested in, joy. You want the joy of picnic? Enjoy the picnic. Change the situation. What can you do in that situation? Be prepared to have the preparation indoor. So you do the picnic inside and modify it so you still enjoy the picnic. You don't lose some basic thing. But if you are stuck. I want baseball game outside or certain game or barbecue outside. You would be hurt. So we always have to adjust. We don't have to sacrifice. My own example, this topic came because I had to go to some show and somebody normally comes with me and if I give some program then he takes camera and records it I put on YouTube or just takes pictures because I'm occupied. He helps me selling the books, help me driving and this. So something came up so he cannot come. I said fine, don't worry. I asked somebody else, let's see if you are interested, come along, you can help me and enjoy yourself. So I asked somebody who could benefit from it. That did not work out and I had to go alone for selling the books, camera work and everything because my wife usually comes along. She cannot come, come along because our daughter was visiting from Dallas with two kids. So what did we do? I took them along. <laughs> my wife, daughter and two kids. So we went to the show and stayed for a few minutes here and there. It was a nice place. and. My daughter took everyone on the beach, which was close by. So they enjoyed, they came back and all this thing, everything worked out. So whatever was there, I enjoyed, you know. Actually what was planned, she wanted me to give presentation as a special guest. But the situation was that it was a winery. People come from outside and all the yoga people, psychic healers, massage people, artists, musician, everyone has their table. So there was no time together that I can give presentation where everyone would hear, listen. So I did not do that. So it is fine. So we enjoyed the trip. So what did we lose? And, and suppose somebody wanted to come, like change mind, going, not going, it's all too much thinking. Just do spontaneously. Just do it. And I say, if it's not fine, you can, we can go back. It was not necessary. But we spent so much time. I would like it. I would not like it. With past experiences, we waste energy instead of flowing. And when I invite somebody, I have a purpose. If you trusted me, then you had it all the time for one hour, 45 minutes, 50 minutes driving one way, another way. So you would have private session while we are driving. Just think about all the things. But I don't tell people. It's just, this is spontaneous. So if somebody says, I cannot, that's fine. I don't try to convince them. Same way, people come to class. I can see what they need. 
and I can tell them, but many of them need to learn the lesson. So instead of telling them you should do this, I usually give them situation so can they can think for themselves and they choose to do it. Because I tell them to do it, it will be secondary, second hand inspiration. But I create the situation when they have desire to do themselves that is more powerful. So, so many people, they need to learn lesson. I allow them more time. I let them ask question. They doubt me, question this, that I can explain. And so many people, I guided them, give general idea, they not listen. And they fell back, you caught, get caught into this. They come back again after two, three years. And I welcome them with open mind, open heart. I say, did you learn the lesson? Let's try it this way. You know, I give different chance and they are more open to listen to me. Okay, so this is my way of flowing with life. <clears throat> People plan, you know, they are coming and last minute they don't show up. Professionals, you know, they say they are coming at this time. I change my plans, I get ready and I have to prepare myself ahead of time and change everything and they don't show up. Some of them never call. What would happen if I got disturbed between my energy? This is my life. I have to take it as it comes. Okay. So this is what is called flowing with life. Does it make sense or ask question? <clears throat> well, uh, John Lennon wrote in one of the songs, life is what happens when you're making other plans. Yes. So, you so, know, that's just... It's the same thing. But this is practical. Just, just not for being spiritual, but just finding joy in life and not being discouraged or depressed or angry about it. Why? What is the root cause of anger? That's another thing. Root cause, what do you think? What is the root cause well, of anger? I learned it from you. But it's, it's <laughs> yeah. when you're, you can't get your attachment. You want your, you have an attachment desire and it's, you're stopped. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Interference <laughs> of your desire. What is anger? Look at anything. You want something, it doesn't go that way, you get angry. So Krishna says, desire is the starting point. So really, Buddha says also, let go of tanha desires, then you will never suffer. Then I, in the books I read, they say six enemies, desire, anger, greed, hope, mud means pride or ego, moha means attachment, matsa means hatred. But I put it differently. Desires increases more, then comes greed. Come lobe, then mud, then you are proud, I have it then you become attached, moha, and then matsar means anyone is your competition, you hate them. And sooner or later, anything is interrupted, you have anger. So I put anger last, because sooner or later, your desires will be interrupted. Well, it, it, it's how you look at things. It's, if you look at people as your brothers and sisters, then they're not your competition, you're not your enemy. It's right. And it's like, uh, my son, it, it rained the one day and he forgot to do his sunroof and he gets into his car and everything was, the, the rugs were soaked under one thing and and my other son's in town too and he's helping him. He goes, man, I would be so upset if this was my car. And he goes, and the oldest goes, I've always wanted it some different type of car than anybody else has. He goes, yes. I got a car with a swimming pool right now. <laughs> he laughs and so, he, as he's vacuuming the water so out. So the bit. starting point is yeah. desire. And desires is not just gross desire, it's subtle desires. And all of us have it. So this is why in deep meditation, we eliminate the desire. We don't suppress them. We just lose attraction for that. Okay. Yeah.